Germany, France and Italy. We are surrounded by three great powers and two of them are authoritarian. As tensions are growing, the importance of our stability, democracy and defense are also growing. So, to boost our defense, we have increased our defense budget and set up the National Defense Fund. We have also reaffirmed our spiritual defense, granting us bonuses towards political power and civilian factory construction speed. Ever since the foundation of our nation, we have been a decentralized confederation. This has granted us big bonuses, but as instability around Europe is growing, we have to start centralize our nation and be more active about protecting our democracy. This also means we have to partially give up our neutrality. We have to strike at our enemies before they do. And most importantly, we will bring democracy, peace and stability to them. But a problem has arisen, the Germans are supporting the fascist party of Switzerland. If they get too much power it could pose a real threat to our future. So, to show the Germans that we are not the nation to play with, we began building forts along our border and banned their propaganda. To prop up our economy and the economy of the Allies, we have decided to increase gold trade with them. This benefited our economy hugely. The time for bickering and factionalism is over. We have reduced the power of the cantons. So we are ready to unite Switzerland under a single democracy. All in the name of survival of our Swiss values and traditions. We are now led by the Federal Council. And with that we are ready to save the first people from the instability growing in Europe. We will demand Vorarlberg from the Austrians. After some thought in the Austrian parliament, they decided to grant the people of Vorarlberg democracy and freedom. 35 days later, the official transfer from Austria to Switzerland took place. This success has shown that our new policy is worth it. So, it's time to strengthen the control of the Federal Council and continue expanding our policy of armed neutrality. Our army is small, but we have two cards up our sleeves. Our know-how on building forts and the Swiss citizen militias. We'll start building forts all around our borders, stopping any enemy advance into our country. And our Swiss citizens militia will guard them. They are militias that only will be fully deployed once war kicks in. They are not so good right now, but as time goes on, we'll slowly make them better and stronger. With our army slowly improving, we can finally create a new Eindgenossenschaft. We are ready to expand so that more cantons can experience our democratic confederation. The first new canton that will join our confederation after Vorarlberg will be Liechtenstein. We have to save them from any outside forces as they are too weak to defend themselves. And they are lucky that we saved them, because some time later the Germans anschlussed all of Austria. We have to hurry up with our expansion to add new cantons and empower the council to centralize our country even more. We'll start a campaign to influence states all around us to join our confederation, granting them peace and democracy in the process. We began with Tyrol as they surely want to be saved from the Germans. But as we began spreading our influence, the Germans noticed and hurriedly tried their best to stop us. Sadly for the people of Tyrol, they managed to. So we tried a second time, but now in Italy, more specifically Piedmont. Our first attempt has shown some weaknesses. We need to centralize our state even more. It's time to prepare for the dismissal of the council and the inauguration of our first president. While we prepared, the news of our influencing campaign reached us. It had failed in Piedmont too. We have failed twice. But while we were focusing on Italy, our influence slowly grew into rule. Another campaign could possibly sway them to our side. 90 days later we succeeded. The Tyrolean people are willing to join us. But the Germans are not willing to give it to us. So we have to begin pressing them for it. While we did, we started our second influencing campaign in Piedmont. As the Germans saw our demand for Tyrol, they just ignored it. Our plan is falling apart, this won't do. It's time to focus more on the offensive. 
we will begin a huge military reorganization, getting rid of the Swiss civilian militias and replacing them with real soldiers. While we did, we saw that our campaign in Piedmont was successful, so we began pressing the Italian government to give the state to us. Maybe they are nicer than the Germans. Well, they weren't. Our plans of peaceful expansion are not working. Neither the Germans nor the Italians are willing to surrender their states. While we tried to press them for our states, they themselves expanded. The Second World War has begun and Germany is now trying to outmaneuver France. If they succeed, we would be completely encircled by the Axis. So we need to plan for this worst scenario. We started with building better infrastructure so that we would be able to quickly reinforce any weak defense, and then began preparing the Swiss people for war. But as we began establishing local guards to help our soldiers, the thing that we worried about happened. The Germans had captured Paris and soon the French surrendered. With this radical change in the environment of Europe, it's time to finally dismiss the council and inaugurate our first president. We are now the Helvetic Republic. And with our new president, Ernst Wetter, we are readier than ever to face war. We continued with our preparations by building anti-air guns and raiders to counter the German air force. After that we began planning our total defense. As we finished our forts and positioned our army along the German and Italian borders, we received a worrying message from the Germans. They were from now on considering that we had breached our neutrality, and later that month they declared war. We immediately got invited to the Allies and quickly joined, together against the fascists. The Germans and Italians launched two attacks. Both were repelled by our huge fortifications, but the Germans had success in one area, the air war. Our anti-air defenses were not enough to stop all the German bombers. They could almost freely bomb our forts and infrastructure, so to counter this we will begin building even more anti-air. The Germans and Italians, noticing that they couldn't defeat our forts, quit attacking us and started a war against Yugoslavia instead. This means a lot of Italians have left and their front is really weak. So we can stage an offensive to liberate the people of Piedmont. We punched through the weak Italian border guards and marched almost uncontested to Torino, Milano and Genoa. We have now liberated all of Piedmont from Mussolini. Every man, woman and child in the state celebrated this. Around 200,000 men signed up as volunteers to join the fight and help us liberate the rest of Italy. This was really important as we only had 8,000 men left before the offensive. We also gained a big chunk of the Italian industry and we could begin arming our soldiers with portable anti-air. Sadly, our allies in Yugoslavia were losing their land to the Axis army. Once the Axis army has won, they will turn around to liberate Piedmont. So we will instantly begin building even more forts. The Italians started attacking Piedmont aimlessly. It didn't succeed, but a few times they were close to capture Tile. So we sent over more and more troops to the region, letting Switzerland more and more undefended. Not against the Germans, but undefended against ourselves. A resistance inside our military had formed, led by Henri Guisson, are going against our new policies of expansionism. Their goal is to return to the old Switzerland. But as we already are at war with the Germans, Guisson sees the only way out of it to win it. And many believe he's the only one who can do that. So one day, just as normal as any other, he together with other generals couped our government. This is the third time we have changed country leader. As the military went through Guisan's reforms, we got attacked a lot more in Piedmont. The Italians were slowly pushing us back, and we sadly had to retreat from Milano. The repeated Italian attacks were dealing more damage than we thought. We have only 11,000 men left. We have to retreat from Piedmont or risk annihilation. While we retreated, at least some good news arrived. The Japanese had attacked the Philippines, meaning that the USA joined our side in the war. 
and the Germans started their unrealistic Operation Barbarossa, leading the Soviet army to join our side. Now it's time to wait. The Soviets have taken half of Königsberg, and the casualties on the German side are over a million. It's time to try and liberate Piedmont again. The Italians were once again not ready and we managed to liberate Milano. This gave us a lot of new manpower as we now had course on Lombardia too. Using makeshift bridges we continued our attack over the Po river. Once we broke through we reached the Mediterranean Sea for the second time and encircled Torino. After liberating the city and its people we were ready for a huge offensive to split Venice from the rest of Italy. We have split Italy in two, and while we did, Mussolini got deposed and then liberated by the Germans. Italy is in chaos, one last offensive and they will completely collapse. We have captured all of mainland Italy and put it under a puppet regime. While we did, the Axis completely collapsed. The USSR has captured almost all of northern Germany and Romania. Our allies on the other hand declared war on the illegitimate Vichy government. If we want to liberate all of the Alpine region we have to act fast before the Soviets do. So we launched an offensive towards Vienna from Trieste. On the way to the city we captured Klagenfurt and Graz. Once we reached the outskirts of Vienna the Soviets came from the north and together we encircled the city. We managed to capture it before the Red Army. But the Red Army was slowly advancing towards Munich. We can't let them capture the capital of Bavaria. So we launched a fast offensive on the weak German front and managed to outmaneuver and capture the city from them. Once we captured the city and the Soviets captured Ulm, the Germans surrendered. The war is almost over. All we have to do is to cross over to Sicily and the Italians will surrender. So that's what we did, we crossed over and they surrendered. In the peace deal we managed to annex all the states we wanted. Austria, southern Bavaria and northern Italy. We even got Savoy from Vichy France. As we now own states that border the Mediterranean Sea we took the chance to kickstart our navy by stealing Germany's. We also got to keep our Italian puppet. Finally we are at peace again. We will return to old Switzerland that Guzan promised. We left the Allies and declared neutrality. We also gave back the power to the cantons. We started converting our military factories to civilian ones and converted our military to the old system of Swiss citizens' militias. We have now returned to old Switzerland but there is one final thing we will do. Change our name to the Alpine Confederation. Thanks so much for watching this video and prepare for season 3 with a special twist.